So there we have surface tension, the shape of drops, and the shape and form of bubbles. And while I'm on this, I would suggest to you that there is a paperback book entitled Soap Bubbles and the Forces Which Form Them, written by an English physicist whose name was C.V. Boys, B-O-I-S, like boys and girls. And I would urge you to read it because there are hundreds of experiments there you can do with soap. Soap solution, soap bubbles. Now more on the same. Here is a rectangular uh, a cubical frame of wire. I'm going to submerge it into the soap solution and withdraw it, and you notice the enchanting shape which we have here. Now, what must physicists say of these shapes? The shape which the soap has taken is a sh shape of least energy. And you will remember on an earlier program, I remarked that the energy of a system tends toward less. So watch what happens when I puncture one, uh, one uh, uh, frame. Watch. Oh, there it goes. And look at that beautiful shape. And now, there it goes. There it goes. Oh, there's another one. Always tending toward a surface of less energy. Now, why are raindrops round? The reason they are round is that they have the largest volume with the least surface. That's the property of a sphere. And hence, their energy in this shape is the least. To show you that a circular or spherical form is always that toward which a system goes, I'm going to dip this ring in some soap, and here is a flexible loop of thread. Now watch what happens. I draw it out, and I have... Oh, it's not what I want. I draw it out. Oh, it's not what I want. Oh, well, I'll show it to you. Do you see that the curvature of this thread is circular? Let me try it with another one. I thought I had... Oh, yes, here's another one. Let me try it, because there are some problems in doing... Oh, yeah, yeah, this is all right. Now, I'm going to puncture one film and watch the action, the motion of the string. Oh, there it is, into the arc of a circle. So the film above tends by contraction to a least energy. Further proof of this. Here is another ring, and here is a closed loop in here. A closed loop. I'm going to dip this into soap solution, withdraw it very carefully, and you see the loop inside is quite closed because of the tenacious holding of the soap film. Now I'm going to puncture the soap film in that little ring, in that little loop, and you will see it all go into a circular arc. Watch it. Watch it. There it is. Now let me do the uh, break the film elsewhere in the larger part. Watch it. Watch it. There it is, tending toward least energy. I'll do that once more because it's quite enchanting. Watch it. Oh, look at, look at, oh, did you see how tenacious that soap film is? Now watch it. There it is. It goes into the arc of a circle. Here are two loops side by side, and some interesting things can be done with them. Oh, I'm having a little trouble, and I may abandon it. Yes, let me suggest what you would witness. Let me suggest, because it's very important. Supposing you took a funnel and another funnel, and you dipped their front edges into soap and brought their faces together close and then separated them, what would you have? Well, the film would have that curvature, that curvature, and that has a very special kind of geometry. That is called a catenary. C-A-T-E-N-A-R-Y, and that's the Latin word for chain. And indeed, if I took a chain here and held one end, one end so and one end so, the curvature of that chain would be a catenary. And it is interesting to discover that in this shape, that film surface has the least, the least energy, which is a fundamental principle of nature that the energy of a system goes downhill. Now, since I am interested in blowing soap bubbles, I have here something I'm sure many are familiar with, a little pie plate with some soap solution and a ring, and there, uh-oh, 
There, I make some bubbles. And I call to your attention, they're beautiful properties. They are spherical. Oh, I thought I could catch that. Watch it now. Oh, I may be a little too impulsive. There it is, there it is. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh, I caught it. I caught it, and it went through the other one, which suggests the tenacity of this business. Look at that. Now, what has this to do with other important uh, matters in nature? I already said that raindrops are spherical. Very important. And indeed, may I suggest, if you have a clothesline, clothesline that hangs from here to here, the next time it rains, I urge you to look carefully at the raindrops that are hanging, the water drops that are hanging. They hang very, very sharply formed and all spherical. And now what do you see happen? These which are in a higher potential level slide downhill. This one hits that one. They coalesce and get bigger. And now the surface tension force is not adequate to hold up this greater weight, and it drops down. So here is a beautiful thing to witness. One last thing. Here is a wedge-shaped vessel, one of which, now held in my right hand, has water in it that is colored with food coloring, and the other has mercury in it. And I hope you see a very distinguishing feature. Let me show you quickly what that feature is. If I have a narrow tube immersed in water, the surface in the water would be so, and the upper surface in the tube would be so. In the mercury, the surface would be so. And this is very important for the affairs of nature. And I thank you for your attention.